Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the geometric distribution. We're going to walk through the formula. We're going to talk about the applications of it and how it's a little bit different than uh, like a binomial CDF situation. So let us go ahead and commence here. So the first thing we need to determine when we get uh, you know, a prompt here is we have to determine if it's a geometric setting. Hallmarks of a geometric setting. Well, We talked about the bins formula last time, and this time we're going to talk about, uh, sorry, not the bins formula, the bins uh, acronym. Now we're going to talk about the bits acronym. And the B is, is it a binary setting? Is there a success and a failure? I is independent. Are the trials independent of one another? The T is the trials until success. This is the true hallmark of the geometric distribution. We're gonna have prompts that say, what is the probability that it takes at most three attempts for the first success? And so uh, we wanna know how many trials until success. And the trials until success is uh, really important because it's like the binomial situation because it gives us a fixed number of trials on which to construct the formula. And S means same probability, meaning is the same probability for each of the um, subsequent trials, like for each success is the probability stay the same. So here's the geometric distribution formula. The probability of our event happening in a given number of trials is equal to uh, the probability of failure, which is 1 minus p, which is the probability of success, to the x minus 1, meaning the number of you know, times that we do it. So what's the probability of getting um, you know, a heads in three you know, on the third uh, of heads on the third flip, right? So um, once you flip it and then flip it and then flip it, the third one, you get the heads, then you stop. And so uh, the exponent on our failure is one less than the number of total trials. So heads on the third flip would mean you had a failure and a failure, which would be represented by this part here, because this is the probability of failure. And then this is our number of failures. Okay, so our number of failures uh, is ultimately one less than our number of total trials because on that last one, we multiply by P, which is our probability of success. Because on that last one, we have the success. Okay. When we go to describe a geometric distribution, distributions. We kind of use the same outline that we had before. We're going to use shape, center, and variability. And shape is always going to be skewed right because the probability of getting success in the first trial is always greater than second trial, third trial, fourth trial. Why is that? Because as we move down the line and we have events stacking up, for example, I flip ahead, I get a success on the first try. Well, my probability of getting it on the second try would be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, meaning I had a, prob a, a failure happen and then a success happen. So as you stack those events, because their probabilities are less than one, that number is gonna go down. And so it's gonna be skewed right. Our center is going to be um, our expected value, which is one over the probability of success and our variability is going to be represented by standard deviation, which is the square root of probability of failure over probability of success. Here's an example. Mason never has a pencil when test day rolls around because the classmates are tired of having to supply pencils for Mason. Only 15% of students will give Mason a pencil when asked. Today is test day and Mason begins asking randomly selected students for a pencil. Let y equal the number of students Mason asks until he finds someone who will give him a pencil. The question is, is this, um, a, is this a geometric distribution situation? Well, yes, it is because we have a fixed number of trials, meaning 
we have failure, 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 success, meaning he asks no, asks no, asks no, asks yes. So is it binary? Well, success is uh, getting a pencil. Failure, no pencil. Okay, uh, I, the trials are independent. Okay, I ask one student, it's a 15% chance. I ask the next student, nothing has changed. It's still 15%. Uh, T, because Mason asks until he finds someone, we have a fixed number of trials until something happens. And our probability meaning our same probability is uh, our probability of success is equal to 0.15 in every case. So we have a geometric distribution here. In part B, it says, what's the probability that the third person, exactly the third person, uh, gives him uh, or has the pencil ask, ask is, so, sorry, what's the probability that the third person asks is the first person who gives him a pencil? So he asks the first person and it's a failure. He asks the second person, and it's a failure. He asks the third person, and it's a success. Um, because they're stacking on top of one another, it's this happens, and this happens, and this happens, meaning fail, and fail, and success. And so the probability of y is equal to 3, meaning exactly 3 asks, is equal to 0.85 squared times 0 0.15, which gives us 0 0.1084. Part C, what is the probability that Mason gets a pencil by the third person he could ask? So that means by the third person would be, it could have been the third person, but it could have been the second and it could have been the first. So we've got to stack them on top of one another. So the probability of y equals one plus the probability of y equals two plus the probability of y equals three. Uh, another way to think about this would be to use uh, the concept of three or below. And when we do the concept of three or below, we're using a CDF. And in this case, uh, it's going to be our calculator function, um, Geomet CDF. And it asks you for the probability of success and the number of trials that you want to go up to. So this is our probability of success. Here is our number of trials. And when we do that, these are, these are equal. So note that, like these two things... Uh, adding these three up is equal to this. When we do that, we get a probability of 0 0.3859. And that's the probability of the first person having it or the second person or the third person. How many people should Mason expect to ask before getting a pencil? So when I think expect, I think I have my expected value here and my variables y. So expected value of y is one over p, which is equal to one over 0.15, which is equal to 6.67. So that's the average number of people he should at, expect to ask before getting a pencil. Part E, should Mason be surprised if Mason didn't receive a pencil until he asked at least 10 people. So at least 10 means uh, 1 minus the probability of everything else uh, or below. Because at least 10 would be 10, 11, 12, whatever. Uh, so that's 1 minus the probability of 9 or below. So the probability of x is greater than or equal to 10 is equal to 1 minus... Uh, the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2 plus uh, all the way up to the probability of 9. Another way to think about that uh, would be to say that I'd use that binomial or the geometric CDF again, right? So because it's 9 or below, I could think of it as 1 minus geomet. CDF of 0.15 comma 9. And when I do that, I get that this is 0.2316. And we evaluate, is that likely? Should he uh, be surprised if he gets that? Well, in terms of 
you know, probability and statistics, that's not actually that unlikely. So we'd say, no, 0 0.2316 is not unlikely. So it's not unlikely that he would ask 10 or more people because we have all that. Uh, so find the standard deviation for the distribution of the number of people he asked for a pencil before finding someone who will give him one. That's the standard formula. So the standard deviation of y is equal to the square root of the probability of failure over the probability of success. Square root of 0.85 over 0.15 is equal to 6.146 people. So there we go. So the true... Uh, the number of people varies typically from the mean by 6.416 people. So, so, so there that is. That's the basics of the geometric distribution. It looks a lot like the uh, binomial distribution, but it's got that one little wrinkle of having trials until success as opposed to a set number of trials. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.